Hi, boys and girls. Today is Wednesday, May 20th, and I'm going to be reviewing with you um, lesson three for fourth grade, Eureka module six, which is the decimals module. Today we're working on lesson three. So on Monday, we had a quick introduction to decimal lesson, which you guys did fabulous on. I'm so proud of you. Today, we're officially starting the Eureka module, and the I can statement for today is I can represent mixed numbers with units of tens, ones, and tenths with place value disks on the number line and in expanded form. So the first thing I really wanted you guys to do was to watch the video that I posted in the Google Slides, um, the, Dwayne, the Dwayne video, Dr. Dwayne. I know it's 17 minutes long, but it's really important that we build a very strong foundation of decimals before we get into a little bit of the harder stuff. So I think it's really important that you focus on that video first. Um, and also, you know, our mini lesson, if we were in school, would be anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes. So being that this is a 17 minute video, I don't think it's too far from what we would be doing if we were in a classroom. So having said that, I want to start off with a couple of things, you know, um, about like, what is decimals? You know, um, when we did fractions, you guys had some exposure to fractions in the earlier grades, second and third. So you kind of had an understanding of what a fraction is, but decimals, this is a whole new ballpark. This is a brand new thing. So basically a decimal is um, a system of numbers that are based on the number 10, tenth parts and the powers of 10. And I'm gonna talk about that in, in a minute. Um, another definition of a decimal is um, a decimal is a fraction written in a special form. So instead of writing a half, for example, you can express that fraction as the decimal 0 0.5. And I'm going to explain that as well. Um, those are just a couple of, of quick, you know, kid friendly um, explanations, definitions of what a decimal is. A decimal is a fraction. It's another way of writing a fraction. So what do we know about fractions? Well, fractions are less than one. So a decimal is less than one. It represents a number that is less than one. So to, to begin this lesson, I just kind of want to review with you guys um, place value. You know, this is going back to, you know, what you guys have been learning. You know, the beginning of fourth grade, we definitely talked about this. Um, I know you've talked about it in earlier years. But let's review what we know about place value. So when when I say place value, hopefully things like ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hopefully those type of words kind of stick out in your mind because that's exactly what we're doing. We're talking about place value. And as we've discussed many times on the place value chart, when we go from the right to the left this way, the value of the number is increasing by 10. Now, you know, to, to kind of, you know, go backwards and say, well, what is the opposite of that? Well, the opposite of when you go left increasing by 10 would be going right, which is decreasing by 10. So when you go from the right to the left, you are increasing or times 10. And when you are going from the left to the right, you are basically dividing by 10. Let's take a look at that. Um, just with your basic place value chart, right? I just took out right here, I have my my ones, my tens, and my hundreds, which should be familiar to you guys. And just give me a sec to open up my pen. Sorry, my marker. I don't want to leave the top off because then they dry off. They dry out. Okay, so I have my ones, my tens, and my hundreds. So let's look at um, a number like this. We'll do 555, right? Well, we know if I were to write this out in an expanded form, it's, you know, I have five hundreds, which looks like this. I have five tens, which is 50, and I have five ones. Now let's look at the value of these numbers as I move from right to left. Well, five times 10 is 50, and 50 times 10 is 500. And the pattern goes on and on and on as you move from the right to the left. It keeps increasing by 10. So hopefully, you know, you have that. Lock that in your brain. All right. Lock it in and keep it in. Now, what happens, boys and girls, when I go this way? When I go this way, what comes before ones? Right? Well, we're not used to really knowing 
or recognizing that there is something that comes before ones. Well, what that is, is that's where our decimal place goes, right? Our decimal point, I'm sorry, I said place. Our decimal point is a, a mathematical symbol that separates the whole numbers from the fractions, okay? So we've seen things like this decimal points before. I'm sure there is some familiar, familiarity that you have with decimals. And I'm going to give you a quick little example right now. Um, let's say something like this. I'm putting it in dollars and cents so you can see, right? So you've probably seen a decimal point used in this before, right? This is read as $2.50. I always like to say end. The decimal point symbolizes to me the word end, right? And this is the dollars and these are the cents. So if I were to say this, you know, if I were to just say this in regular, you know, language, it would be $2.50. Well, what is the purpose of that decimal point? What is that decimal point doing? Okay, it is separating the whole numbers, right? The whole numbers from the fractions or the numbers that are less than one or decimal, okay? So that is just to kind of tell you what the point of the desk, like what the the, you know, what the purpose of the decimal point is, is to separate the whole numbers from the fractions or the decimals. So now let's look at that a little bit closer. Um, so I want to tell you that because this is based on a 10 system, decimals is based on a 10 system. What that means is, is that this is equal to one tenth. which is also displayed as this, which you guys did a great job on Monday's lesson. Recognizing that the word one-tenth looks like this is a fraction and it looks like this as a decimal. Now, since this system is built on groups of 10 or powers of 10, what that means is that 10 of these is equal to one whole, right? So if I have 10 tenths, right? One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, right? Six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and ten tenths. Ten tenths is equal to one whole. Boom. One whole. All right. Um, so if I have four tenths, you know, and I say, okay, well, these are four tenths. How many more tenths do I need to get to one whole? Well, you would say six, right? Six tenths plus four tenths is 10 tenths, which is one. This is all, decimals is all tying back to fractions. So that's why I kept saying back in February when we started fractions, it's so important to have a strong foundation because fractions is tied to so many other things when it comes to math. So now let's look at this, um, place value chart that I made. And I kind of just want to review a couple of things with you guys. So I just want to show you, sorry, I'm just, you see me putting the top on the marker. Um, I want to show you, you know, exactly what we're used to seeing. So we know that, and it's kind of going to be a little smushed, but here is what we're used to seeing, right? We're used to seeing everything to the left of the decimal point. We're used to seeing ones. And then after, and then next to that, one times 10 is 10 right? And then 10 times 10 is 100. And then 100 times 10 is 1000. So as we go, we're increasing our value by 10 times. 1000 times 10 is 10,000. 10,000 times 10 is 100,000. And 100,000 times 10 is a million, right? So we, we know that we have that foundation already. Here is our decimal point, and now we're doing the exact opposite. Instead of increasing our value 10 times, we are decreasing our value 10 times. So here, the first one we have after the decimal point would be considered a tenth. Then when we add a zero and put the one, we call that hundredths. Then when we add another zero, see there's a pattern, boys and girls, there's a pattern. Here there's no zero, here there's one zero, here there's two zeros. Two zeros is hundredths. 
three zeros. I mean, two zeros is thousands. I'm so sorry. Here we go. Now we're at ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, and millionths. Okay. So the difference is the numbers stay the same. Like the, the names kind of stay the same. Tens and tenths, hundreds and hundredths. But you see, we're adding a TH at the end to kind of indicate that this is a number that is going to be smaller than one, okay? So now I kind of want to take a look at, I know this video is getting long, but I just really want to set you guys up to be successful for this. I really, really do. I know that you guys can do it. Um, I want to look at this. This is from the teacher's edition for this lesson uh, for Eureka. Um, and it's really cool because it's kind of showing how you can display different types of decimals on a number line. So being that I said that decimals are um, based off of powers of 10, that means that between each whole number, there's going to be 10 spaces. Now that never changes, that never changes. So let's look at this, At this, this is, kind, this is like a number line, it's going from zero to, to five, and in between each whole number, so in between zero to one and one to two and two to three and so on, you're going to see 10 little lines, okay? So here, let's look at point A. Point A is um, right next to the four almost, very far away from the five, and see how it's on the first line? So that in decimal form would be, would be four, Point one. Now we really don't say 4.1, we would say it as 4 and 1 tenth, but you know, hey guys, if you say 4.1, it's all right, it's all right. Um, I don't want you to focus on the expanded form or that right now, I just really want to focus on recognizing it on the number line and recognizing it as a decimal and as a mixed number. Now remember, a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction together. So let's look at the next one. So the next one, uh, letter B, is between 32 and 33. So if I were to count the lines, so I'm gonna not put my pen on because one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it is 32.5, which is actually right in the middle. So I would say that as decimal as 32.5, and I, as a fraction, I would write it as 32 and 5 tenths. Now, hopefully a lot of you guys recognize that 5 tenths is equivalent to a half. So technically 32.5 is 32 and a half. All right, let's look at example C. So I can see that C is between 40 and 41. And if I count how many, remember there's 10 little lines in between each whole number that does not change. And because, because decimals are in uh, powers of 10, your, your denominator is always either going to be 10, 100, 1,000, okay? It's never going to change. So um, if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? So it's on 40 and 7 tenths. So that's displayed as decimal form 40.7. And as a fraction or a mixed number, it would be 40 holes and 7 tenths as a fraction. The last one is D. All right, so I'm gonna work smarter and not harder. I know that it's only one away from 91, so it's gotta be 0.9, and it's 90.9. It's not 91 because I'm not on that 91 yet, right? So it's 90.9, which is read as 90 and 9 tenths, okay? Now I wanted to take a look at the problem set. I know that I have assigned you guys some in the Google Slides. Um, I didn't want to give you too much, um, but let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at B here on the number line. So you can see the two whole numbers are 17 and 18. And if I count, I know that there's going to be 10 here because it's based on powers of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this number, boys and girls, it's written as 17 and it's on the one, two, three, four, five. So it's 17.5. I'm just writing it off to the side, which can be written as 17. So that this is it in decimal form, 17.5. And it's uh, as a mixed number, it's 17 and five tenths. Or if you guys say 17 and a half, 
special high five to you because that that would be um, reducing it and, and making that connection that five tenths is the same as a half. All right. So let's look at um, at letter D. Now, letter D we know is 22. So we know the two numbers that it's in between are 22 and 23. Right, so where exactly would that go? Where would 22 and 2 tenths go on that number line? So let's do it together. 22 and 2 tenths, right? We know it's in between 22 and 23 on the number line. And in between 22 and 23 is going to be 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we're going to mark it at 2. Because this, this would be 22, this is 22 and 1 tenth, and this is 22 and 2 tenths. So it would be right here. We would mark that as 22 and 2 tenths. That is it in decimal form. Um, I hope this lesson helped. I know it's, gosh, it's equally as long as, as, as Dr. Dwayne's. I'm sorry about that. But I really hope these, these help, these videos helped. If not, we're happy to meet with you and discuss um, during our Zoom call. Okay, bye.